Good. I'm glad that there are individuals we could count on. I've asked my brothers, I said, if you had to do it over again, would you serve still in the armed services? And without hesitation, they said yes. And I'm glad about that, that we could count on them. But I thought about this this morning. Are there many people who we can count on today? Now, I know that we have our frailties, we have our shortcomings, we have our lack of uh, resources and so forth. But sometimes, though we would, they would like for us to count on them, we can't always count on them because maybe they lack in some ability uh, along uh, some line that we would expect. But there are very few people who we can really say, I can count on them if something happened and they would come to my aid. They may or they may not be able to. Too. But I thought about the book of Daniel, and I want you to turn there, chapter 1. There is one person you and I can count on, and that's God. Um, Doc was talking about uh, individuals who we can count on to some degree this morning uh, in our lesson there on the life of uh, Moses' parents. But one that we can count on all the time is God. We can always trust him without, you know, any partiality. We, we can trust him. Years ago, I always thought my dad that I could count on him for everything. And I, I can't think of a time when I've asked my dad, because he, uh, he's in heaven now, uh, about doing something for me. I remember when I was in college, I, I came home, I bought a, uh, a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. How many of you are familiar with those? And uh, my uh, uh, throw-out bearing went out of that thing. Well, not only the throw-out bearing, but the little arms that hold the throw-out bearing had broken. I don't know how I even got home from college with that thing. But anyway, my dad had a broken arm. And my dad took that motor. He had to drop the whole thing with one arm. He got some supports. I don't know how he did it. But he took that out. He took the bracket out that he could be able to get it re-welded or put a new piece. I can't remember. It seemed like he said they were going to weld it. And he put that throwout bearing because of the fact I felt like I could depend on him. And he, he knew that. He, I, needed, I needed the car. And uh, it seemed like always he could come through. But then as he got older, he couldn't always do the things. That might happen to a lot of us on those who we depend on, who we count on. But I find here in the book of Daniel, someone that we can always depend on, on we can always trust in, and that's God. Look here, if you would, the book of Daniel chapter 1. Look down to verse number 9, if you would. Uh, matter of fact, let's, let's jump back one verse. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Read the verse 9 with me. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. God was working intricately in the life of Daniel in regards to what he was going to face in days ahead. Because even his life was going to put on, be put on the line, but he could still trust God because he was doing what God told him to do. Jump over to chapter 2 and look down at verse number 22 if you would. Matter of fact, jump back again to verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. You know what that's saying? It's saying, I can till, still trust God no matter how long it's going to be. Forever and forever. Blessed be God. For wisdom might and might are his. And he changes the times and seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. 
I thank thee and praise you, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known, not now made known unto us the king's matter. Now, jump over to chapter 6, if you would, and look at verse 16. Chapter 6 and verse 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him to the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will do what? Deliver thee. Now look at verse 17. And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments and music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said, O Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. Read verse 22 with me, would you please? My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before the old king have I done no hurt. Now listen to verse 23. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because, read it with me. He believed in his God. Let's have a word of prayer. Well, our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Can you really count on God? Do you really count on God? Do you really trust God? Our Father in heaven, I pray you would take your word this morning. Speak to our hearts. To help each one of us to realize this is not just a fictitious story here in the book of Daniel. But it's a story that you had placed in history. And this great history book called the Bible. That we may know that you're still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that each of us can count on you whatever situation that we're facing in our lives. We can depend on you. And so I pray you would take your word this morning and, and let it become real to each one of us that we might realize the goodness of the Lord will lead us to that place of repentance that we will count on Him, that we will trust Him with everything in our lives, no matter what is uh, facing us, that we would trust Him, not just in the good times, but the bad times, because you haven't let, lost control, Lord. And I pray that you would take and let your word speak to us this morning in a real way. And I pray for that person who's come in this auditorium, that young man, that young lady, that mom or that dad, who has never put their first personal faith and trust in you, that today will be the day that they will count on you for that assurance that when they pass out of this life, they'll go to heaven. That we would depend upon you for the assurance that you're going to supply our needs. You're going to take care of us. No matter what the situation that we're facing in life, you can be counted on. May thy will be done. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This week I read a story and I uh, read all kinds of stories from time to time. How many of you uh, have at least heard of a man by the name of Max Licato? Raise your hand. Max Lucado's written a lot of books, has some great things he shared. Well, he shared about the time when he was seven years old in one of the stories I was reading. And uh, he didn't care too much about some of the rules that his father and mother had, had put down that he was to adhere to. Any of you have any problem with that? Or have had a problem with that? 
You, you know, you just didn't go along with what your mom and dad said, and you didn't like the rules. And so anyway, Max Locato was seven years of age. He decided, well, I, I, I'm going to leave home. I, I'm going to run away. Well, he got as far as the back alley, and he realized that he was hungry. So he turned back around and went back into the house. He thought that his father would most likely, uh, you know, be mad at him and possibly give him a good old spanking, which he deserved, and all of us do that. But anyway, he knew all about what Max was feeling. And so when Max got back in there, there was no sitting, there was no one sitting at his place for the breakfast table. It was still empty for him. It was still available for him. Uh, and someone asked him the question, suppose someone had asked your father, Max, the question, Mr. Locato, your son says he has no need of a father. Do you still consider him as your son? And then it went on to say, what do you think my dad would have said? He considered himself my father, even when I didn't consider myself his son. His commitment to me was greater than my commitment to him. And then he said, so is God towards you and me. Just because we may have a wrong thought, just because we may think that we no longer need him, God does not disown us. First of all, God does not disown us as his creation. God loves all mankind. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Doesn't matter what we've done, how we feel towards him or whatever, God still loves us. The Bible says he loves us with an everlasting love. Would you say that with me this morning? God loves us with an everlasting love. Then there will be a time when he doesn't love us. But think about this. How much more does he love and I don't know how he does that, but there, there has to be a, a certain distinction. Like, for example, I may love your kids, but I love my kids a little bit more, okay? God loves all mankind in the fact that we quote John 3, 16 over and over and over in our lives, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But there's something God does in behalf of a person who has trusted him as their own personal savior. And that is, he has placed upon us the name beloved. Child of God. God has done that for you and me. And he will never disown us. We can count on him. We can trust him. And we can, we can rely upon the fact that he knows the best for our life. And sometimes we don't like what's happening in our life. And Doc brought out this morning about the parents there of Moses. As he was in that little uh, basket in the bulrushes there. And uh, this is interesting. Doc, in all the years I've been a Christian, 50-some years, I forgot the fact of there in the uh, Nile River is occupied by alligators. The bulrushes that they placed him in that little basket was not a safe place. But it was God's place. It was God's place for him to be in. And when Doc was talking about that, the verse that we quote so often that uh, I learned from Dr. Lee Robertson, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Not that all things are good that happen to us, but they can work for good in our life if we realize we can count on him. Because it may be that something comes into our life to help to mature our life. Maybe we need to grow up a little bit. Another thing could be the fact that God says that person needs to expand and be strengthened in their life. You see, it's not the easy things that build spiritual muscles. It's the hard things. It's the tough things. 
It's the things that, you know, hit us up against the face when we were not looking. God can take those times and make us spiritually strong. That was true here in the life of Daniel. I mean, all the opposition that Daniel had was coming at him full force. But God had a reason. What was that reason? Well, look back here, if you would, in the book of Daniel chapter 6. Here was the reason. Look at verse 20, if you would. And when he came to the den, he cried with a, uh, 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 with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the what? Living God. Now, look up here if you would, please. You've got to understand what was happening here. They were in Babylon. And Babylon, just down, like down in Egypt, they had all kinds of different gods that they worshipped. And one of those gods was the king himself. You see, we miss out on the fact that we have a living God. And folks, God is alive and well today. Amen. I don't want you to miss it. The New Year's Eve service this year, we're going to watch the second film called God's Not Dead, number two. How many of you have seen it? God's Not Dead 2. It will knock your socks off. It's better than the first one. I viewed it the other day and I said, we got to have that. I said, our people will be energized by that. The living God... God is not dead. God is alive. And he understands everything that you and I are going through. And we can count on him today just as much as we ever did. And look what it says. O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Look down at verse number 22. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before the old king have I done no hurt. Look at verse 23. Then was the king exceeding what? Glad. Folks, I want to tell you something. When you identify God as the living God, he's going to give you a glad heart. Look at it. And command that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. Years ago, as a teenager, after I got saved, I heard a song by John Peterson. John Peterson wrote a lot of beautiful songs. And one of those songs that stuck into my mind up through the years, and it was brought back to my memory the other day when I began to uh, build on this message. It's called, I Just Keep Trusting My Lord. Here's how it goes. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord, and he gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky over the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will what? Never fail. Do you believe that this morning? Would you say amen? amen. God cannot fail. It's not part of his character. And that song goes on. He's a faithful friend. Such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky on the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. Amen. I want you to take your Bible and turn back to the book of Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I think of the time that Moses took and he stepped off the scene. God had taken him away out from among the people of Israel. And the Bible tells us there in the book of Joshua chapter 1 that he gave Joshua a promise that 
I believe that's applicable to you and me today. And it starts there, if you would, in Joshua chapter 1, in verse 1, it says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I gotten unto you, as I said unto Moses. And, and I had, I, I thought about something, I'll, I'll read the rest of it in a minute, but I need to tell you a story. That verse number three is just as real for you and me today as it was back then. The story is this. Several years ago, that's been quite a few years ago now, because Mona and I, we, uh, we went to uh, Williamstown, New Jersey back in 1974. Now, that's a long time ago, all right? I know we don't look that old, but <laughs> back in 1974, the Lord called Mona and I to the Open Bible Baptist Church in Williamstown, New Jersey. And the church was located on Howard Drive at that particular time. And the church would not hold more than maybe a couple hundred people. Well, the church was running 350 people. And I can remember when we got there, it was still pretty, it was getting pretty warm. It was in the month of April. And uh, lo and behold, being the junior church and the, the, the associate pastor, the only associate pastor at that time, the church had a big tent on the outside of the church, and that's where I had junior church. God has spoken to our pastor, Dr. George Riddell. God spoke to his heart about going and taking this verse here in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 and it says every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses now Dr. Riddell had enough faith to believe that God could do that for Open Bible Baptist Church there was a piece of property that was, uh, that was barren, nobody was using it and so forth, but it belonged to a doctor. And he owned the property next door, which had a house on it. And Dr. Riddell, he wasn't interested in the house, he was just interested in the property where they could build a new church because they had no room. By the way, they had no money. And God took and spoke to him and so one night, because the, the doctor would not sell the property to Open Bible Baptist Church. He wouldn't to sell it to any Christian organization. Anyway, Dr. Riddell went to that property, pulled his shoes off, and walked all around that property. Guess what happened? He went to the doctor and said, God's told me, you ought to sell that property to us. Guess what happened? He sold that property to him. He practically gave it to him. Then, not only that, God's always a plus God. He gave him the house and the property next door, too. And they were able to sell that property to help, you know, in the purchase of the next building that they were going to build. To make a long story short, after I'd been there for, uh, you know, a few months, God gave us the opportunity to build a new building there. Uh, uh, I can't remember the guy's name now that built it, the construction guy. He was in the church. Anyway, they built it. And the first Sunday, now remember, we were running 350. The first Sunday we moved in, we had 700 and some people. And we gradually grew the next five years from 700 to 1,400. God gave that property at the right time. You know why? Because Dr. Iridale believed God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Let me give you another illustration. Yes, we had the property, and then we had the money from the building, that, the house uh, there. But we still needed $25,000 more dollars that had to be paid just in a few days after the construction people. You had to put so much money down. 
for a large building like that. And we thought we had the $25,000. The bank was going to give us $25,000. And we got a call from the bank and said, we can't loan you the $25,000. I can look in my mind. I didn't have an office. I had to share office with the secretaries. We had two secretaries. And um, Pastor Riddell had his office. Pastor said, Brother Moore, we've got to pray. I said, why? Oh, we ought to pray anyway, right? You've you got to pray. Anyway, he said, the bank has turned us down. We, we don't have $25,000, and we've got to pay that $25,000 real soon, in a few days, to the contractor for him to continue the work. One day, another bank said, we'll loan you the $25,000. God brought the $25,000 in. God is still on the throne. God is still God, and he can be counted on no matter what we go through in our life. God can come through. Let me give you another illustration. Mona and I uh, had, owned, we had owned a home there in Indiana. And we had left the school, uh, I was still in evangelism and also teaching. We left uh, Central Baptist uh, schools, Central Baptist Academy now. But we left it and we went to Milford Christian Schools, our academy. Our home was 50 miles from Milford. And we were driving that. And I said, Lord, we can't continue to do that. I says, our car is going to last. I mean, it's going to, I mean, we're putting 100 miles or more on the car a day. I said, we, got, we, need, we need to have some place to live. Or you need to sell our house. We had it up for sale, and uh, a few of them fell through that, you know, you could, we didn't have, didn't have it. Well, the pastor, and Dr. Duttery was here, when uh, uh, on a recent funeral uh, some time back uh, for Brother Herschel. Anyway, that was my pastor at, at First Baptist Church of Milford. Pastor Dutry said, look, we have a complete house underneath our house. Apartment with all the bedrooms and kitchen and so forth and so on. He says, won't you come and live here until you sell your house? Well, that is prayer number one answered. Prayer number two was this. We had to find a house. So we started looking in the month of May all the way to the month of December. And our house still wasn't sold. I said, Lord, we've got to have someone to buy our house. We've we, we got, we got to get located over there. Guess what happened? Not only did God bring us a buyer, but the guy wanted to pay cash. I'll take it. We were able to sell our house, get the cash, and we were able to go get the house which we own now in Southern Ohio. By the way, keep praying for that thing to sell, all right? He's going to sell it. Why? We can count on God. His timing is always right. He's not, listen, he's not late one second. He's on time. Daniel was in a desperate situation, folks. I mean, he was down in the line. By the way, do you really believe that story? Yes. That's just as true as John 3.16. That's just as true the fact that Jesus hung up on that cross that day and died for your sins and my sins. Daniel trusted God. But wait a minute. Look back at Joshua chapter 1 here very quickly because I'm going to have to finish up here. Look down at verse number 5. He says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not, folks, say it with me. I will not 
fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Now read verse number 7 with me. Only be thou strong and very what? What was on the cat? Be strong and very courageous. It's right there on the hat. Do you know that's exactly what God wants for your life and my life? To be strong and very courageous. Why? Because you and I can trust God. We can count on God. Turn over to the book of Psalm, chapter number 33, real quickly. This morning, Psalm chapter 33. And look down at verse number 16, if you would, please. It says, There's no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver my, uh, uh, any by his great strength. Behold uh, the eye of the Lord upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. O soul, our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have what, folks? trusted in his what? Holy name. Now we can't go into all the names this morning. We won't. But every name that God has means something. Like El Shaddai, El Shalom, so forth and so on. Now look at verse 22. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, us according as we do what? Hope in thee. You know what the word hope there means? A blessed assurance. Now, what is God trying to say to you and me this morning? Number one, God's word is dependable. If God says it, you can take it to the bank. Amen. You can depend upon him. You can count upon him because God's word will be around. It says God's word will never pass away. When God says something, folks, he's going to do it. Now, we may not know the time frame, but we can count upon God. You say, preacher, this message must be for you. It is. But it's also for every other person here this morning because there's something that you and I are facing that we need God's divine assistance in. And God says he will do it. He says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I what? will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And he told Joshua here in Joshua chapter 1, he says, look, I'm going to do it for you. Matter of fact, turn back there. Let me give you something real quickly and, uh, before I close. And, uh, and I'm not going to close right yet. I've got five minutes, so stick with me, all right? Joshua chapter 1. Look back there that he says to Joshua, and I believe that you and I can apply it to our lives, because the Bible says those things were written aforetime, were written for us as well. Look at it. Verse 6. Five, excuse me, I'm sorry. It says, I was, as I was with Moses, so I will be with what? Thee. You can write your name in there. It's just like the verse in, in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. There he's saying, look, I will be with thee. I'm glad that God's presence is with us day by day. Amen? Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So don't fear what man should do in you. God is near. He's going to take care of you. God promises. You see, we can know that because God says, I'm going to do it. But he says something else in that scripture. He says, I will not fail thee. I'm glad we have an unfailing God. Amen? Amen? He said, I will never fail thee. I'm glad that he does what he says he will do.
God is not a liar. God's going to keep his word. We can depend upon him. God's plans are dependable. What he says, he carries out. That's true in, in the life of Joshua. That's true in the life of Daniel. That was true in the three Hebrew children's lives. God said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be with you. When they threw those three Hebrew children into the fiery furnace, there was only three at that time. But when they looked back in there, there was a fourth one. And that was the Lord. He wasn't going to forsake them. What's he saying to you and I through that illustration? Through thick and thin, through fire and cold, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be right there with you in the problem that you're facing, the difficult time. Listen, who do you think that gave lockjaw to those lions? God did. God took care of them. Who do you think that quenched that fire from the fact of touching that even not even the smell of smoke was on their, on their clothing when they ran that fiery furnace? It was God who took care of them. You say, preacher, that's just a story. Yes, but it's a true story. God does not lie. He says we can depend upon Him, His Word. We can depend upon His works. We can depend upon His power. You see, God is all-powerful. He has no limitations in regards to Him because the Bible says He is all-powerful. That means, without exception, God can do anything He desires to do. But I like this one. And I want you to turn, if you would, turn back to the book of Daniel, chapter 6. God's mercy is dependable. God's mercy is His tender-hearted, loving compassion for all mankind. And if God loves all mankind, how much more does He love you and me? How much more does he show mercy towards those that love him, the Bible says. But look there, if you would, at Daniel chapter 6. Look down to verse number 18, if you would, again. It says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Listen, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will do what? He will deliver thee. If he had mercy upon Daniel, I don't know what you're going through today, but I know this. God's mercy endureth how long? Forever. That means you and I are included in that. That whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with today, God says he's going to deliver us. We're simply to look to him like Daniel did. We're simply to look to him like Joshua did. And when we do, God's mercy is shed abroad in our lives. You know why? Here's why. God always remains faithful. Would you say that with me? God always remains faithful faithful. The Bible tells us that over and over and over again. It says this in the book of 2 Peter 1, 4, whereby are given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Faithful is he that calleth you, now listen, faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. God made that promise to you and me. That means we can always count on God. You say, preacher, I've done too much stuff wrong. God can't save me. Bible says he can save to the guttermost, to the uttermost. In the book of Hebrews. God can save anybody. God can help anybody. Our help is in him in my favorite verse out of the book of First Peter, chapter 5, verse 7, he says this, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth, listen, 
for you. That means it doesn't matter what it is, your responsibility, my responsibility, in the fact that we can count on him, our responsibility is to cast that problem before him and say, Lord, here it is. Let me close with this. The other day I was reading, matter of fact, several weeks ago. How many of you remember uh, Curtis Hudson? Would you raise your hand? Dr. Curtis Hudson's in heaven now. He was uh, over the soul of the Lord. He was a great evangelist as well. Dr. Curtis Hudson says, said, we can always count on God, though we can't see the thing clearly. Our responsibility is to come before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't understand this. I don't know how to deal with this. But my responsibility is to look to you. And so, Lord, make this thing clear to me what I should do, and I'll do it because I can count on you. And that's the same way with you and me. You may not understand everything that you're going through. You may not understand the matter of salvation. You may not understand what the problem you're dealing with right now, but we can count on God. Can I hear a hearty amen on that? We can count on God. So what your need today is and responsibility is to turn that thing over to Him and God will take care of it. Do you believe it? Well, do it. Let's bow our heads in the word of prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed. You see, he remains faithful. He will be with you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. His promises will stand fast. And simply what he does now, he commands us to do. That which we don't understand, that which we don't see, we don't, may not be able to see the solution. He simply says, trust me, trust me. And when you're willing to take that step of faith, God will perform the miracle. When you're willing to do what God tells you to do, Moses' parents didn't understand how God would take care of him when he'd be placed in that little basket among the bulrushes on that Nile River. But God knew exactly what he was doing when he told them to do that. They simply obeyed. Now, what is God telling you to obey him to do today in your life? What is he telling you to do? What is he encouraging you to do? Your responsibility is simply to say, God, I don't understand it. But you make clear what I'm to do, and I'll do it. You know what you need to do today. Will you turn that thing over to God? And he will do in your life that which needs to be done. Our Father in heaven, I come before you. We can count on you. You gave us all those stories in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. How people, as they are willing to go into action, we, at that point, Release your power because we're counting on you to take care of the situation. And so I pray for every person here this morning, whatever they're dealing with in their individual life, I pray that they will know they can count on you because you said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct our paths. You'll make it clear to us, Lord. So bless this invitation this morning. As congregation here, those who are watching by means of the Internet, I pray that we would count on you and not ourselves how to solve the problems of life. May thy will be done, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please, Doc? What